Just want to say a really big thank you to everyone that's reached out the last couple of days uh, regarding their well wishes um, and their thoughts and prayers. Not necessarily needed, uh, appreciated, but not needed. Uh, like I said, the previous video that I released on the weekend wasn't seeking to be a pity party or anything along the lines of that, but I do appreciate the sentiment. Um, I will pass the well wishes on to Leanne when I get a hold of her, <laughs> but hopefully she's doing well. But like I said, it's appreciated. I'm not making fun of it. Um, and I will learn one day where to work out where I'm supposed to look my eyes because <laughs> I've said in a previous video that um, I use the Mac and I can't work out where my eyes are supposed to look. So I'm not trying to give you no eye contact. It's just I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to look special in the process. Uh, so I went... A little bit of an update. Uh, I had was on, I suppose, watching Soda City Flips' video this morning. He's live. And I had a few people in the chat ask me how I was and all those different things. Um, I alluded to that I went to the GP today. Um, so we'll give a bit of an update on that as well. This is more or less a video just to give an update because I've had a lot of people um, yeah, reach out to me, ask me if I'm all right. Um, and to be truthfully honest, yeah, I was suffering a lot of anxiety over the last couple of weeks, which I did mention. Um, but And it's going to sound very cliche, and I apologize for that in advance. But... A lot of people that I suppose that I really haven't spoken to in a long time, you know, we had, had some differences previously, reached out, uh, which is fantastic because, you know, I, I do like talking to people and I do like um, mending bridges when we can. Um, however, <clears throat> like I said, a lot of people reached out. A lot of anxiety has just dissipated, to tell you the truth, like to the point where it feels like I've got it off my chest, um, what I've been worried about, what I've been concerned about. So I will go into the GP thing a little bit because it has progressed from there, which <laughs> is not the uh, the way that I had hoped. However, you know, it is what it is. So basically, I did allude to an operation that I had yesterday. Um, without going too much into it, I know it's going to be pretty sensitive, and I strongly advise it unless you want to know about the um, the octopus anatomy in a little bit more than you probably want to. I had a hydrocell octomy, actomy, octomy. I don't know how to spell that. <laughs> and if you're a doctor out there or even Graham, my beloved nurse slipper. Um, so he could basically, yeah, give us a correct spelling for that. Strongly suggest you don't uh, Google it. It's not probably <laughs> something you want to be uh, eating and researching at the same time. So quite sore from that. That was a very minor op. That was something I've had for a little bit that I wanted to get rectified. Um, <clears throat> Uncle Wayno, <laughs> the poor guy. Big shout out to his movie channel. If you if you are into movie channels, uh, Uncle Wayno is your man. Uh, so we'll put his link in the description below. So if you if you do find this video by chance, you like movie reviews, they do a themed every Monday night alive. Um, fantastic show. There's about four or five of the guys on there, and it's just. It's a very small channel, but it's got room to grow. So I, I strongly encourage you <laughs> to uh, help Uncle Wayno out because of the poor guy having to put up with my um, <laughs> my stories in uh, very graphic detail yesterday. Um, yeah, so basically had that operation, came home yesterday afternoon. <laughs> don't don't have an operation in Canberra because they literally tell you nothing. Like um, I had this operation, got kicked out. They gave me some medicine. They gave me some uh, strong medication. Uh, which I haven't taken yet. So, and I'll probably, <laughs> I'll probably do a live if I overtake it because, yeah, I, I barely take any paracetamol. So that's, this thing's off the chart. Um, <clears throat> they gave me some Panadol. They gave me some of this strong medication. They gave me some eye cream for some reason. And if you do research it a bit later, you'll probably work out what the hell's going on with that. Um, all this other stuff. They gave me a piece of paper, which I left at the hospital <laughs> to go pick up and they lost it. So that's probably what I got to do after surgery and all those different things. So literally um, no guidance, no nothing other than to shower 24 hours, which I've had a shower. <laughs> so you can rest assured um, there are some people in the reselling community that don't like showering. I won't name them. <laughs> um, however, like I said, that I literally have to rely back on Google to work out what I need to do post-operative care. My Mrs. Octopus has basically told me to ring the hospital, but I'm too proud. Like, I'm a bit, bit, bit of an idiot in that respect. So <clears throat> as to move on to the next step, and I suppose I'm going to call this series <laughs> you know, to, be, um, to be determined, but I've called this episode per se Act 1 because a lot of people have reached out and asked me about it and all these different things. So I'm just trying to cover it off. These won't be a daily thing. This will be just the case as it, when it pops up and all these different things. And kind of a more of a reminder for obviously um, – to get your health checked, yeah, you know, all these different things, mental health, physical health, and all these different things. I didn't make a miss the other day when I spoke on Sunday is that I yeah, basically targeted it towards um, resellers and people who are self-employed and all these different things. But I would like, I would urge everyone regardless because I'm working a nine-to-five. Yeah, a lot of people work nine-to-fives as well, a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people would resell full-time when they should be working a nine-to-five. But 
I suppose what I want to tell you is that regardless of your circumstances, your working circumstances, your full time, part time, casual, you know, whatever it is, and you know, and your family circumstances, mm-hmm. that's something else you need to take into consideration. So please, 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 if you haven't been tre- checked out, <clears throat> excuse me, in the last you know, six to twelve months, book an appointment with the doctor, get some blood tests taken, yeah, you know, get on top of these things before they happen. Um, <clears throat> so as to what's going on with me, last week. <laughs> Don't recommend, but I had a uh, blood pressure monitor attached to me for 24 hours, which is <laughs> the worst thing I've ever had in my life. Um, well, that was up till, till yesterday. <laughs> so what this thing does, it, it straps onto you and just takes your blood pressure every 45 minutes. Uh, at night time, you're supposed to push a button and it will like do it every three hours or something along the lines of that. I, being true to my <laughs> my nature... Uh, I forgot to push the button or I didn't push it hard enough and it was pumping my arm every 45 minutes, <laughs> much to much to the chagrin of uh, Mrs. Octopus. So, yeah, so she wasn't happy about that. <clears throat> I went and seen a psychiatrist a couple of weeks ago just to spill my guts. Uh, I've been diagnosed with ADHD, which is probably explains why I'm bouncing all over the place. Um, I was put on some medication. However, I can't take that because I got hypertension and leading into today's episode, <laughs> I went to the GP uh, and he has confirmed that I have club fingers and basically booked me in for a lung physician or a lung specialist and also a cardiologist, which looks after your heart. Um, and unfortunately, I can't go on the ADHD medication yet uh, for the simple fact is that <laughs> potentially if the club fingers resulted from, I suppose, a cardiac perspective, I could drop over dead tomorrow. That was his statement. Like he, <laughs> I don't know what it is about Canberra is that a lot of the doctors down here don't have any bedside manner or just don't tell you what's going on because, um, but like I said, last time when I went and seen the GP and initially raised it, you know, my blood pressure was through the roof. It was 160, 170 over 90, uh, which is quite high, um, primarily just for, you know, just primarily for, for the stress and all these different things, worrying about uh, Googling all these different things. He did go mad at me for Googling because apparently you can't self-diagnose yourself, even though I did self-diagnose myself with what exactly what it was. <laughs> but don't do that. Don't, don't add stress to yourself. Um, but the anxiety, I suppose, from that perspective, it dissipated because I had a lot of people reach out to me in the chat. I had a lot of people reach out to me personally as well. Um, I did have a couple of people and I won't mention them because of their circumstances. However, they did tell me about their situations and by far they're a lot worse than mine are at the moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I'm not going to name them because, yeah, obviously everyone's entitled to their privacy, but, but a big thank you to both of you. Um, it's alleviated my fears a lot uh, in the sense that I suppose that, you know, without saying callous or anything along the lines of that, there are people worse situations than you are out there. So it'd be all those different things. But like I was saying before is that you really, really, really need to get your health checked. Uh, I can't stress enough. Um, look at your family circumstances realistically look at the worst case scenario and this is you know a bit of pessimistic in my sense but the way i look at it is that the sense is what's the worst case scenario this could be with reselling this could be working a nine to five this could be with your finances and all these different things your health um what happened what would you what financial situation would your family be in tomorrow if you if you <laughs> fell over fell over you know and you couldn't work for six months or even worse you, you know you carked it uh so that's something that I suppose I wanted to push across. You know, I don't want to get too, you know, preachy and all these different things. Um, these well, these episodes are going to be pretty sporadic uh, as I get updates and all those different things. Just to, you know, if you are interested, uh, just to give you a bit of a heads up in that regard. But before I go, I um, better keep it in tune with a, a reseller channel. So I will tell you what I picked up from the a thrift store or the op shop, as we call them in Australia, um, when I was at the doctor's. So <laughs> when I went to get my eye cream, and uh, my other stuff that I've got today. <clears throat> so I stopped by the thrift store on the way past. So I got some uh, towels for Dory Flipper because he's a big VB fan and he hasn't reached out with me his details yet. Don't worry, I'm not a creeper. I, I speak to Jutter <laughs> fairly often. Um, and yeah, so I know he's a big fan of the NRL uh, and VB. So that's for Jutter. Like I said, not a creeper. Just talk to him fairly often. Um, also picked up Aladdin Chess Adventures. That's brand new and sealed. Cost me five dollars from Vinnie's uh, or Saint Vincent de Paul's. Um, so this one's brand new and sealed. I have seen some comps, and I don't know if I'm. If you see some editing on the screen, whether it comes up with the sold comps, I'll give you an idea. But looks like a very ratty US version. Uh, sold for about $60 Australian around that period. Uh, I'll probably list that at $100 because I've never even heard this game before. <laughs> for the most, um, the weirdest combination, like Aladdin chess. Yeah, I showed my eldest daughter this afternoon. She's like, I don't like chess. And I was like, I'm not showing you the chess game. It's just like, what's this combination? Uh, so that's in that one. 
Also, I showed this on uh, Soda City Flips channel as well. So basically, this is a Microsoft, I suppose, a Photoshop early 2000s, like 2001 there. Uh, $2 from Salvos, my beloved Salvos that I go to fairly often, all brand new and sealed. Um, the prices range all over the place for this one. This is the British version. I don't know how that differentiates from the US version or anywhere else for that matter, but two bucks, you can't go wrong with that with a sealed you know, vintage big box software. Um, if you are finding big box software, like even you know, video games are quite common um that you know everyone knows about those but definitely keep an eye out for blood uh keep an eye out for doom i know uncle wayne has got a copy of doom on ebay at the moment um if you've got a really decent copy of blood i think around a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars fantastic game by the way um and also doom depending on the quality and all those different things i think uncle wayne has, has his listed at a thousand to me that's a bit underpriced i was thinking about sniping it off him and relisting it <laughs> so each the eye um, but like I said, if you come across software, do you do your comps? Do you, you know, your barcodes aren't probably going to work on these things for face, uh, for eBay. So primarily, just yeah, just type it in. Comes up from that perspective. A uh, bit of a heads up also with the Sega Master System collection. I remember if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I said that I picked up a Nintendo lot, which I was going to flip to turn it into a Sega collection, which I got when I was a kid. Uh, so I got a couple more games that I bought off eBay. Uh, I don't come across these very often. Um, I did have a friend, I think I mentioned in a previous podcast, but, yeah, it's just been passing. You know, like, oh, I'm not big on telling people what I do. Um, I know a lot of people say in videos, yeah, tell people what you do, tell op shops what you do, what, tell thrift stores what you do. I kind of, kind of on the other side of the spectrum, I think Kayfan and I were talking about this the other day, and she's similar, if I remember correctly. Um, but, yeah, like I said, it was just by virtue that I told our friend that I was going down south to pick up that Nintendo lot when I dropped my daughter off. And she's like, oh, I've got a Sega section. I've got a Sega uh, collection inside that I'm, I was going to donate to Vinny's. You can have it if you want. And luck, lo and behold, it was a Sega Master System, which I've been looking for forever. Uh, so I picked up a couple of games, Psycho Fox, which is fantastic. Never really owned it when I was a kid. Used to rent it all the time from the video shop. Uh, kind of like a Mario clone, um, different things. So that's definitely going into the collection. Uh, Wonder Boy 4 in Monster World. So this one wasn't released in North America. So if you actually find a complete copy of this in Australia, I'd probably put it on, on eBay um, and sell it to the States. Put international postage on. It'll go quite quickly over there. I paid, I think, 40, 50 bucks on this for an auction. And it's, it hasn't got its manual. But like I said, I'm too concerned about that. Uh, this is one of my, one of my favorite series, Wonder Boys. Um, <clears throat> I did have this game as a, as a kid, so it's going, going in the collection as well. I'll learn to speak one day. <laughs> and also Rainbow Islands. Um, picked that up off Facebook Marketplace with Psych uh, sorry, eBay as well with uh, Psycho Fox. Psycho Fox? Yeah, Psycho Fox. Um, and Bubble Bobble, which is this is Bubble Bobble 2, um, another favorite in my series. So Bubble Bobble and Wonder Boy was pretty much my childhood and Ghouls and Ghosts and all these different things. So definitely one of these different things. I have spoken about this previously. If you get stuff like this on here, it's like uh, white ink or white out. I'm not too sure what you call it in the States and in the UK, but I'll open it up. And it's also on the cartridge as well. If you get some goo remover or like I use the orange stuff, which I don't have, have on me at the moment because I think I've ran out, but it's on orange powder or something like that. Just put a little bit on your finger, rub it along it. Um, it's not a very flattering angle. Rub it along it and it will basically dissipate. You know, leave it for five minutes. It will come straight off. So this person marked this as an acceptable because of that on the cartridge and on the case like that. Uh, that will come straight off and probably turn that into good, very good condition for the for the age. So <clears throat> that way inclined. And that's, that's all I've got for you today. So basically, <laughs> I'll give you a little bit of reselling. You know, I can't be outdone by the Geelong Flipper with his, um, his pretty cool collections he picks up as well. So if you haven't checked out Tori, um, check him out. He goes by Uncle Flip Flip, so I think he's given uh, Uncle Wayne a run for his money. But anyway, well, um, that's enough of rambling for me today, and I'll, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.